know what AI is? Nobody does. <laughs> about AI today and especially um, the impact that it has on business. So uh, a lot of the press that we've recently had on AI is specifically on assisted learning. And what it means is that a computer that has an input A can provide an output B. So let's just say, is this a, a phone? This is the uh, input A and the output would be yes. The impact that it has um, can be measured in something that um, Andrew Ng has um, uh, defined as to what can a brain process in less than a second. And I really like that definition. So for example, um, is this a, a phone? You know, your brain registers it and, and is able to answer in less than a second. So. Uh, AI can do the same thing. Same, um, similarly, um, you know, um, is this um, attitude uh, suspicious? Yes. Then um, the uh, AI is also something that can be uh, that can be done uh, or leveraged. Um, the limitations of AI and why it's not really uh, um, everywhere is uh, first that you need huge amounts of data to be able to uh, leverage AI. So for instance, um, just to recognize an image, you need over 10 uh, or even hundreds of thousands of pictures tagged with that uh, uh, image to be able to recognize what it is. Uh, similarly, for audio, you need the same types of amounts of, um, of uh, tracks, um, thousands of hours of audio to be able to recognize what a word is, for example. So um, this is, definitely a limitation. A second one is going to be the computational power that it requires. Um, as an example, in June 2012, the New York Times um, basically reported a cluster of 16,000 computers that were all working for one goal, being able to recognize a cat on YouTube. 16,000 computers. So you do need a lot of computational power and I mean the um, there's huge improvements that are happening right now especially if you see the releases that are done by Google um, in CPUs so it's going to be leverage, leveraged in AI definitely and will have a, a huge impact on, um, on what can be done. And then the third thing is talent. Not everybody knows how to program AI uh, and uh, how to interact with it either. So um, there's this huge bidding war that's just happening right now on who can work on the projects and we're limited by the sheer number of people who can actually work on those projects. Um, so that's sort of the limitations that we see right now in AI. Um, it's really promising and I mean we've seen some of uh, examples right now but at the same time there's a flip side to to the story and uh, the biggest downside is uh, the impact that it will have on the job market so um, the World Economic Forum for instance has identified 7.1 million jobs that will be destroyed by AI by 2020 so it's basically tomorrow and um, it's going to impact the people that have the jobs that are the least, least well paid. So the ones who can least afford to be out of a job, basically. Um, then there's people who might be uh, affected in a positive way. Uh, think of a sales rep, for example, who can use an autom um, autonomous vehicle to go and meet his client while he's going to have more time to be working uh, instead of driving, which is not his core competence, right? Um, so that's uh, more positive. And then there's also a trade-off of new types of profiles that are going to be needed. And uh, same thing, the World Economic Forum has um, identified 2 million jobs that would be created by AI. Now, um, it's true that it's going to be destroying jobs, more jobs than it's going to create. However, it will also have a positive uh, societal impact when you think of um, uh, impacts in health, for example. There's currently uh, works being done to identify cancer uh, even before uh, a doctor um, has come in, just by recognizing that million number of millions of images of cancer, then a software can now recognize cancer. So there's hope and there's promise in the impacts that it can bring to society.